Uh, first of all, thanks for Rennie for letting us inside. So I thought we were going to be out cutting the ribbon for the whole time, but uh, we come inside, so come on in now and settle in. Uh, what a terrific job they did. Let's hear it for Rennie LaRue and all his people here. And thank you everybody for coming. It's, uh, it's really a nice gathering, and it's, it's nice to see so many people here, so many people that care about baseball and the community of baseball. We've got a movie playing. Um, <laughs> you know, we just come off the, uh, the National Baseball Hall of Fame induction ceremony, and I was arguing for years on my TV show about Fred McGriff to get inducted into the Hall of Fame, and this year it finally happened, and I was able to say the words, Hall of Famer Fred McGriff. And it just pointed out to me that, you know, we think we'll remember what we were thinking at the time when things were happening. And the truth is we don't. And we think we'll have a place in time and we'll understand what we were thinking at the time. And the truth is we don't. We think we'll remember, we'll think we'll look back and look at our glorious times and we'll have it all vividly in our imagination. But without places like the Baseball Hall of Fame, without places like this now, the New York State Baseball Hall of Fame, we don't. It recedes in our own minds and our own memories, all the things that we held important and dear and it kind of slips away, gets condensed into our memories and into history. And the new generation does not know. And then, more so than ever, this new generation does not know. And they're not gonna remember these things without institutions like this to illustrate and show and vividly point out what happened and what was important, what was glorious, what was fun about our lives, what was fun when we were kids and we were watching, already I've had conversations about Carl Yastrzemski and you know old Bobby Mercer and a lot of players that we all saw when we were kids, and um, it's just it's vitally important. You know, I, I told the story last week. One of the, uh, I believe, one of the aides to Stephen Clark, who is the, uh, the founder of the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, uh, that's Jane Forbes Clark's grandfather, and one of the aides to Stephen Clark remembered when he was back, I think it was either England or Scotland, and he saw some of the old football players that were sensations back in his day, and he saw them doing regular menial jobs and labor later in life, and he looked at that and he said, how do we not remember that this guy played in front of 50,000 people? How do we not value that? And we think, no, that'll be valued. The reason we value it in baseball is because we valued the history. We have this active nostalgia Hall of Fame debate is live and well this year. I was doing my show, I know a few people remember me from Kingston, New York, 35 years ago, thank you. Um, and I was way back when, you know, that's right. Um, but I was, I was in local TV for a long time and we did a thing that I just indulged myself in, it was called Hall of Fame night. I took phone calls on a Friday night. And I thought that was just my thing and I had to explain it to the producers, look, it, uh, this is just my thing, it fills a day, we're not always going to get a good guest, so I'll just do this. And I thought at the time, you know, years from now we're not going to be doing this. No one will care. And thankfully I was wrong. We still very much care. It still means a lot to these ball players. It still means a lot to the fans because we treasure our history. We treasure the memories of our youth. And what I love about this Hall of Fame, more than anything, again, I was in local TV for 11 years, um, when I was in, I was on Long Island, and then I was up in the Hudson Valley, and I remember the long-time coaches, the coaches that were at high schools for 35 years, guys known as the Dean of Local Coaches, and I'm not as familiar with a lot of the Capital District people that are up here, Section 2, as we knew it back then. Uh, but I remember those coaches and how these people led meaningful lives, and that was for all coaches of all sports, male or female, uh, but those are important people. And the people that coach at colleges that have these legendary careers that are just not as, don't reach the same heights as, and the glory and the publicity of major leaguers, I think it's vitally important to honor them as well. And at the induction ceremony last year, I just listened with rapt attention as these men were up there looking back at their careers as their wife and children and grandchildren in some cases were sitting at the table. And I just thought how worthwhile it all was. So uh, I love the fact that this has been built up, that Rennie has been able to do such a fantastic job and that there's such a backbone of, of support from all the people here, from all the people that go to the dinners each year 
to really illustrate that, the people that are just below, you know, that I know like Ron Darling has been put into the Hall of Fame, and I talked to Ronnie about it. I think Todd Zeal might go in this year. I talked to Todd about it. Uh, but I like that it's the, it's the high school coaches, that it's people behind the scenes, college coaches, even people who aren't coaches, people who aren't managers, who are vitally important to the world of baseball because it's the world of baseball that makes it as important as it is. It's not just the players on the field. It's not just the major leaguers. It's everybody in the community and everybody that holds it with such high esteem and value. So welcome to the New York State Baseball Hall of Fame, and thank you so much for coming. Let's hear it once again for Reddy.